This video is in response to a question that was left in a comment of an earlier video. And at first, the question seems fairly straightforward and easy, but there's actually a lot more to it than meets the eye. The question was, how do I capture the last three months of a data set and then create a sum column? If I receive the first file, I want to capture the name and then the sales for March, April, May, and then have a total column after that. But if I replace that with the second file, I want to capture the name column and then August, September, October's values with a total column. So as I said, this seemed fairly straightforward at first thought. But once I got into it, I encountered several issues that required a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking to make this be a persistent query. So let's examine how we would solve this problem statically. This will showcase the issues, and then we'll learn how to turn those static issues into dynamic solutions. I'm going to use these two text files for the demonstration, but if you download the data files and the solution files, I have included in that download the solution for doing this when you're pulling data from external Excel files, as well as pulling data from tables within the current Excel file. The techniques for each of these scenarios is almost identical, and I've included documentation in all of the files showing you the nuances that make the differences between them. So let's start with solving this statically. Now I'm going to use Excel for this demonstration, but this also works in Power BI. We'll begin by connecting to the text file. So we'll go up to data, from text, or CSV. I'm going to point at the text file that has about five months worth of data, and that one's called few. This one's called many, it has more months. Here's my preview. We'll send that to Power Query, transform data. So we can see that we brought in the data, promoted the header row, and then set the data types. This all happens automatically. But now it's time to solve our problem. We'll go up to choose columns, and we'll deselect everything except the name column and the last three months, hit OK. And then we'll select those last three months, March, April, May, and we'll add a column and go to statistics, sum. This created a new column called addition, which we'll rename to total. Now that solves the problem. But now let's see where the problems creep in. If I go back to the source step and I double click the gear and I change this from the file that had a few months to a file that has many months, hit import, click OK, and now we've got January through May. But that's what we had before, but this new file has more months. The problem with this step, if we look in the M code, is this switch right here called columns equals. The original file had six columns. So any file you point to is now going to only capture the first six columns. The new file has 11 columns, so I have to go up here and change this from six to 11. Now before I do that, notice this ends in May. If I go up here and change this from six to 11, now I get everything through October, and that's the last month in this file. Now the inverse problem is if I were to go switch back to the file that has only data up until May, now I'm going to get a bunch of empty columns. So I do get everything up to the sixth column, but now it's capturing a bunch of empties. The solution to this is to completely remove this option of column definition. If you take that out of the M code, now the source step becomes column agnostic. It doesn't care how many columns, it just goes and gets them all. So I'm pointing to the few file, it's only got six columns. If I change this to the many file, now I get 11. If I change it back to the few file, now I get six. So we'll leave this at the six, and that's a problem solved. It's the static declaration of columns. Next, we promoted the header row, and we set the data types. I'm not ready for this, because I should set the data types at the end once I have the desired selected columns and my total column. So I'm going to delete that step. So now the next step is the removal of the unwanted columns. So here we have a select column statement that says I want to keep the column called name and then March, April, May. Well, you can already tell what's going to happen here. If we switch this to the other file that has sales up through October, we're still only going to grab March, April, May. So March, April, May needs to be dynamic. Now, before we plug this solution into our formula, let's see what this does just by itself. So we truly understand what's happening here. I'm going to go back to the source step before any processing occurred. You see it's at this point where I don't want to be tied to specific month names, I just want to point to specific columns. Now these column names are actual specific column names and I don't want them either. I only want the last three columns regardless of what they're called. So let's write a little test formula here. To query the table and have it return a list of the column names, we're going to use a function called table.columnNames. The source step is the table we're going to examine, and when we hit enter, it just brings back a list of the column names, columns one through six. If I fed it a file that had 100 columns, it would say columns one through 100. Now also be mindful that this is returning a list that will be important in a moment. Well, our list only needs to capture the last three. So we'll take the list that was derived from table.columnNames, and we'll wrap that inside of a list 
last n function. So list.lastn will get the last n number of entries from a list. Well, our list is what was derived from table.column names. But I only want to capture the last three rows of that list. Close parentheses, and now we're down to columns four, five, six. If I give it a file with 100 columns, it would be 98, 99, and 100. So it's this formula right here that we're going to copy, control C. I'll go delete that test step. And then back here in the remove other columns, I'm going to replace this static declaration of March, April, May with that list.lastn function. So the table select column says, point me to a table and then give me a list of columns. Well, these are actually two lists. One is the static declaration of name and the other is the dynamic discovery of the last three. You can't just put it into the M code like this. So what we need to do is we need to first go back to the static part of the list and close it off and then put an ampersand between the static list and the dynamic discovery list. We won't need that curly brace at the end. Now when we hit check, oops, made a little small mistake here. In the original test, we were pointing to the source step. We don't want to point to the source step. We want to point to the promoted headers step. So we'll take that out. And when I type in pound sign, we can then choose the promoted header step. Hit OK. We've got name, March, April, May. Now let's test this. Let's go back to source and change the source file from the few file to the many file. Hit OK. We promote the header row. This has all of the sales through October. But then when we remove the other columns, it's August, September, October. So we're no longer tied to the column names, we're tied to the column positions. I'm gonna go back to source and reset that back to the few file. So, so far so good, we're now dynamic up through the third step. The next step is to create that sum column based on the last three. Now, originally we pointed to three columns called March, April, May, which we currently have. But if we go to inserted sum, we're getting errors. And the reason we're getting errors is these three columns are data typed as text and you can't sum up text. So we're going to have to set our data types before we perform the summation. So going back to the previous step, I'll select March, April, and May, right click, change type, and we'll set this to currency. Now the inserted sum works. We can scroll over and we can see our totals. But let's see what happens if we switch to the many file. We'll go back to source, switch to many, hit okay, go back to inserted sum, it's now failing. In fact, the previous step is failing as well. If we go back to the remove other columns, we're selecting the last three columns. Well, now it's August, September, October. When we set the data types, these are hard-coded to March, April, May. Same thing for the summation. We're hard-coded to March, April, May. So we don't want to be tied to the column names. We want to change the types and insert the summation based on column position. So let's see how we can do this. Let's start off by solving the data typing problem. We don't want hard-coded names for the second, third, and fourth columns. We want to use whatever names are there, so they need to be discovered. So let's test this out just as a solo function, then we'll fold this into the solution. So let's start a new formula, and we're going to use that same table.columnNames function. So table column names, we'll point to the previous step for the data, hit enter, and this gives us a list of the column names but I want the name of this specific entry, the one here on row two. So I'll go back into the formula and we'll add a curly brace and I'll put the number two. Hit enter, but that brought back September. Now the reason for that, let me remove this numeric ID. We can't use these row numbers. Power Query starts counting at zero. So this is row zero, one, two, three. So if we wanna find out what's right here, it's going to be position one in the list. So we'll go back to those curly brace, add a one, hit enter, and that gives us August. If we change it to two, we get September. And of course, if we change it to three, we get October. So let's change it back to one. We'll highlight this test formula, copy it, control C. We'll delete that step and we'll replace this static declaration of the column name March with the table.column names position one definition. Hit check and it fails because we have to do the same thing for April. But this one's going to be position two. While we're at it, we might as well go ahead and fix May and this one will be position three. Hit okay. Now everything's working. That M code was a bit difficult to read, so I've cleaned it up a little bit by adding some carriage returns. And we can see how we can select column one, set it to currency, column two to currency, column three to currency. This currently says August, September, October. We go back to source, change it to the few file, go back to change type. It's now March, April, May, and everything's still working. So if you need to set a data type to a column based on its position, this is the way you can do it. Now in my experiments, I was hoping I could have combined these three statements into one statement by doing something like one comma two comma three, and then I wouldn't need these rows right here, but that doesn't work, unfortunately. You have to define these one at a time. Now we're almost finished. 
our last step is to create that summation column of March, April, May. Now, when we created that, it created a column called addition and we renamed it to total. I don't like to have steps like this that are very minor in their operation. They're necessary, but they're very minor. So I'm gonna delete that step because I'm gonna go into the M code and just change the beginning name of this new column from addition to total. And then we get two for one. Now it's working with the file with the few months. Let's go back to source and change it to the file with the many months and see if it still works. And you can see it does not. And if we look at one of the errors, it says I couldn't find the field called March. So somehow we need to go up here and make this dynamic. Instead of statically defining those three column names, we want to tell it just sum up the last three columns. Now we could do the same thing that we did last time, but I want to show you another technique for this. Instead of telling it what to sum up, we'll tell it what not to sum up. In other words, if we look at this table, let's go back to the previous step, we want to sum up August, September, October. But this code is very cumbersome looking. And imagine if you wanted to sum up the last 36 months. I don't want to write this 36 times. It would be easier just to say sum up everything except the name column. Everything else I want to sum up, just avoid name. So let's create a little test. We'll go back to our failing sum function. And let's add a column that just creates a record object for each row in the table. So we'll take out everything after the each and we'll replace that with a record to list function. And we'll use an underscore, which is a shorthand representation for current row. Close out the parentheses for the add column function, hit enter, and now we have a column of nested lists. If you happen to see this red bar that says this is full of errors, that's really kind of a bug. If you switch back to an earlier step and come right back to this one, and you can see there aren't any actual errors here. But if we peek inside of one of those lists, let's pull this up, you can see that each row in its entirety has been converted to a list object. Well, we want every field in that list except for the first entry, the name part. So we'll go back into that record to list function and we'll tell it to not bring in the name column. And to do this, we're going to use a record.remove fields function. So the first argument is the record, and that's going to be my underscore, comma. And then which fields do you want to remove? I need to provide a list of fields. Lists always go in curly braces, even if there's only one field. And since we only have one field, we'll define it as a name. Field names have to go in double quotes. Hit enter. And here we are back at our lists. But if we peek inside the lists now, notice it's only the numbers. It's not the employee names because we removed anything from the name field. All we have to do now is sum up these remaining numbers. So we'll wrap these two formulas inside the original list.sum function. So list.sum, and then we'll put a close parentheses at the end of this. So we convert each row to a list, ignoring the name field, and whatever's left over, we sum it up. Now we can set the data type for our total column to currency. Let's see if this works when we feed it a different file with a different number of columns. Let's zoom out a little bit. Currently we're summing up August, September, October. Let's go back to the source, switch this from the many file to the few file, hit okay, go to the last step. Now we're summing up March, April, May. Go back to the source, switch it back to the many file, go to the last step, and now we're summing up August, September, October. Here's the beautified M code with documentation. So quickly to review, we connected to the text file. We kept the first column, which was called name, and the last three columns using that list.lastn function and the discovered column names of table.column names. We promoted the first row to a header. We set the first column's data type in a static fashion, but then the last three columns, we did those dynamically because their names change. And then finally, we summed up the last three columns by basically saying sum up everything except the name column. And we did that with a combination of the record.remove fields to get rid of name, the records.toList to turn what was left over into a list, and then feed that into the list.sum function. I also combined two other steps here where we named the column total and we set the data type to currency so we didn't have to have those as separate steps. Now, earlier in the video, we saw a small little catch when pulling columns from a text file, and that was the hard coding of the number of columns. So we removed that argument and made it dynamic. We have a similar issue when dealing with Excel files. So if we look at the source step, here I'm pointing to the few file, but if I change this from the few file to the many file, it looks like it's going to work, but if we go to the last step, it's failing. It's failing because of the second step called navigation. In the Excel file, the table's name is few. Well, now we're looking at a different file where the table's name is many. So we'd have to go in here and change this from few to many, and then it can see that table.
Now the last step works. So if you're going to change the source step when pointing to an Excel file and you're pointing to a table, make sure you change the table name to match. If you're unclear what I'm referring to, here's the Excel file with the few number of months and I have a table here named few. Here's another Excel file with many months and you can see the table's name is many. So it's that table name we were just switching. So be sure to download the test files and the solution files from the link in the video description. This way you've got the full documentation. And if you can think of any ways to improve this, please put it down in the comments. I'm always up for learning how to optimize my queries. So if you can make this more efficient, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And remember at VCTI, the learning never stops.